Okay, we're back. This video continues a series on the JIT.LCD object in Max, which is a tool that allows us to do all sorts of 2D drawings uh, and animations. And before we look at Max, I think if we're thinking about computers drawing things, it's helpful for us to actually first look at grid systems and then also how humans take in drawing commands. So let's head over to our whiteboard. Let's think a little bit about, first of all, a grid system. So we have here a whiteboard, this is a 2D plane, right? And we think about this X direction this way, right? And our Y direction is up and down. And probably in geometry class, you learn to draw graphs with a zero, zero down here at the very bottom. Can you see that? Yes, you can, excellent. Um, when we're doing drawing in Max, we're thinking of our origination point up here in the upper left-hand corner, which I cannot reach. But up here is where zero, zero is. And then as we count across this way in the x direction, we're adding numbers. So we're going all the way across. So let's say our size is 320 pixels. This last row is 320. Um, and as we're counting down from top to bottom, this y direction, the last thing that we can have here, not zero, zero, wrong is 240. Okay, so keeping that in the back of your mind, if you tell me, a human, to go and draw a circle on this whiteboard, I can do that. I can walk up here, I can pick a marker, and I can draw a circle. Now I had to make, well, that's not a great circle, but it's a circle. I had to make some assumptions about what you wanted when you said draw a circle. So for example, I chose a color for you, I chose a position and a size, and I drew it with a frame, I did not color it in. Now, I'm human, so I can make assumptions like that. Or, I could ask you for clarification. I could say, what size of circle would you like? Small, maybe you say small. Um, and then I could say, well, where would you like the circle? Position. And so then you could maybe say, well, I'd like it in the center. And then I could say, what color would you like it? Maybe you say blue. Great. So I've asked for clarification, because I'm human and you're human. Well, actually, I'm a video, but you know, let's say you're here. And now I know, OK, small blue circle in the center. Now, I know what center means, because I know the word, the symbolic representation center of this board. I know that that means equidistant from the left to the right and the top to the bottom. So I can come up and I can use my eyes and my proprioception to draw a small-ish, sort of, maybe that's medium, circle in the center of the whiteboard. Now, because I have this kind of human language symbolic representation, you can tell me things like center. If a computer has this, you can also do things like in the center. And if it doesn't, then we have to use numerical representation to tell Max or your computer, whatever program you're using, where to draw the circle, what color to draw the circle, and how large to draw the circle. So let's come take a look at this and how this works in our patch. Okay, over here, we'll start with the basics. Here is the JIT.LCD object. And there are some things that are predetermined here for me. So first of all, just like over on our whiteboard over here, I have a specific size that's chosen for me. I can't draw outside of these bounds. And it's 320 by 240. So the size is specified in the arguments of this JIT.LCD object. I've also specified here four planes and character or tar data, which is pretty standard for most of the jitter work that you're doing. That means 8-bit. Save that for another video. So this has been predetermined, right? We've, we've discussed our size of our canvas. And uh, by the way, this JIT.LCD object is sending out all of its data and displaying it in a JIT.P window here. P window. Whoops, 
comment.p window. Command J to justify. And we are going to now send a message to the jit.lcd object. We're going to tell it, hey, draw a blue circle framed in the middle of your canvas. So here's a message box. The first thing that we want to say is the type of shape. So frame oval is the one that we drew. And then the next arguments that we have here are left position, top position, right position, and bottom position of this circle. So when I hear the word center, I can, as a human, guess, approximate where the center is. I didn't have to divide 320, my total width, by half, and then 240, my total height, by half, and then think about, well, how big is my circle? Maybe do some subtraction. I didn't have to do that. Now we kind of have to do that. So let's just start with half of, one, of uh, our, our x size, which is 320. So that's 160. And we'll just put the left side of the circle there. It's not going to be exactly right, but it's going to be close. I approximate it as a human, too. It's fine. And then our top position, we will put also halfway. We will put halfway from the top to the bottom. So 240 is our max, so we'll divide that in half, so that's 120. And then our right and our bottom positions of our circle are determined by the size that we want. So let's pick something small, maybe 20 pixels. And then uh, we'll, we'll add 20 pixels to the left side to get our right side. So 160 plus 120 is 180. 120 plus 20 is 140. And now we're, we're good, right? We picked our position. And so we'll just send this message to the JIT. Uh, oh, I clicked it. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. So we actually, the JIT.LCD needs more information. One thing, just like, so just like other jitter objects that we've looked at, you need to send a bang to this jit.lcd object in order to get it to report the result of the message that you sent it. So let's try sending it a bang. So we click on this message, and then we click the bang, and nothing has happened. So why not? Well, we forgot you had to tell me, the human, what color you wanted your circle. So let's tell the computer what color do we want the circle. We can do this in two ways. So the first thing that we could do is we could set the foreground color, FRGB, with a message. And here I have zero red, zero green, and very blue. So I'm going to click foreground color blue, draw a circle sort of in the middle, bang. And did we get a circle? We did. It's very hard to see because our background is still black. So let's fix that so that it matches our whiteboard. OK. Here is uh, the background message, BRGB, 255, 255, 255. And that is all white. So we are going to click on that, and we are going to assume that it turns white. Yes? No. We, again, remember, have to hit the bang in order to get LCD to report. And I'm going to click it. And guess what? Nothing is going to happen. I'm going to click this message. I'm going to click this bang. <sighs> and still nothing happens. And that is because the background message needs one more word, and that is the word clear. So clear is actually the message that JIT.LCD takes in to actually reset the background to the color that you specified. It's just what it wants. I don't know. So what we do is we say background color white, clear, then bang to update the LCD. And now we have a nice whiteboard. And now if we go and we say foreground color blue, frame oval kind of in the middle small, and bang, whew, finally, we have told Max to draw a small blue circle sort of in the middle of our JIT.LCD screen. Whew, OK, so three more quick things about this. Eh, maybe three, maybe four, I don't know. First of all, we did not have to specify the foreground color uh, with this separate message. We could do this in our drawing command. So I could say that I wanted like, maybe a red circle, 25500. 0, 0. 
And now if I click this and a bang, I get this to be a red circle instead. Um, and if it, another thing is that if it bothers you that to reset, you have to click three times. Right? What you can do is you can put this whole thing just in one message box. So we'll set the color, and then we'll put a comma. We'll type the word clear, another comma, and then the word bang. And this message box now is three separate messages sent in this order, first brgb, then clear, then bang, and proves that it will do it. Now I just have to click this one time, and it sends all three of those messages that are necessary and clears my screen. OK, so actually, I think that's enough uh, for this video. And in another video, we will go and look at all this stuff on the right-hand side and how we can start to do some basic automated visuals.